live in Ecuador for zero dollars a month. Live like a king. We've all seen them. When you came here, you researched. If you're coming here, you go on the internet and you look and you see all these reports and you see all these articles and they're all claiming the same thing. They're selling something. They're selling subscriptions. They're selling eBooks. They're selling seminars. They're selling real estate. It's in their interest to get as many people here as possible to put money in their pocket. These reports do not and cannot take into account your lifestyle. Usually what they're writing about amounts to subsistence living or they're just a flat out lie. There are those claiming to raise a family on a thousand dollars a month. Of course, they're leaving out all their other income that may be double that, triple that. Here's one recent article claiming $500 a month and you will live well. Then of course, there's live like a king, live like royalty. We all like that, right? They will do or say anything to get what they want. Or how about this? Family of three for $907.43 a month. What happens if they lose three cents? Hmm? Why is it that claims going back to 2009 are making claims for $1,500 a month for two people. And in 2018, they're making the same claim. Hmm? Let me ask, were you lying then or are you lying now? Why is it that they never mention startup costs? It's common to spend $10,000, $20,000 to set up your household here. Not talking about visa costs. Do we just forget that cost? that's never going to be factored into what your cost is. If you took out a loan, is that how that works? If you're going to drop $20,000 and you're going to live here, say 10 years, shouldn't that be factored in as part of your cost? No, that wouldn't look so good, would it? Why is it they never factor in the high cost of owning a car when listing transportation costs about owning a car? Oh sure, they'll list gas, they'll list insurance, They'll list licensing. But if it's a $20,000 car, dead silence. Doesn't count, I guess. You're always told there's no heat bills. Then why, for half the year, you see social media jammed up with the same question over and over. Where can I buy a good heater that won't break the bank? Hmm? Look, don't buy the snake oil. Beware of social media because those same vultures are lurking on those pages and they're waiting to pounce with bad information to try to steer or corral people into the end game that they want. Can you live as one person on $800 a month? Sure, you can, but just keep this in mind. Once you're set up and it will be a minimalist lifestyle. You're not going to be living like a king or a prince or a poor stepchild. It's going to be pretty minimal. It will not be the kind of lifestyle that you lived in the United States. Look, when it comes to this cost of living, it can go on and on forever. I'm going to make a suggestion because it's a personal thing. So approach it like this. List everything that you need or want to live your life. Take your time, get it all. Then start researching the reality. Start looking at the rents for the type of house you want to rent, the utility costs, food costs for specific items that you want. Do it item by item. It becomes objective then. And if you put on Facebook, how much does X cost? These vultures won't catch on to that. So they're not going to jump in and try to twist and turn. It's really going to be just a matter of how much X costs. Of course, there'll be a range. How much does internet cost? Well, it might start out at 35, 
can take you up to over $100. So be specific about what you need or what you want. You're also going to find that some of the things on your list won't even be possible. By the time you're done with that list, you're going to figure out if that's the situation you want to live in, can live in, if it's okay with you, but your eyes will be wide open and you're going to have real information. So that's my tip for the day. See you later.